the GNU name system. Um, you can see the design is a bit more complicated, uh, but it also shows a bit more because it's quite different. First of all, we don't have neither the name coin flat space, nor do we have the hierarchy of DNS. In the GNU name system, we basically have a directed graph. And in the directed graph, since we don't have a root, who are, you know, where are the starting points? Well, it's every one of us. Every one of us is running their own zone, and they are all equal starting points for name resolution. So we have here as an example Bob, right? Bob has his zone, uh, with his zone database, where he has an entry for Carol and an entry for his web server, and he has his GNU name service resolver, um, uh, name system resolver, and here's Alice, and Alice has her zone, where she has, for example, an entry for Bob in there, and Alice has her name solver, and that one runs on her machine, right? Just like Bob's runs on Bob's machine. And Carol has her name resolver with her database and runs on her machine. And then they all participate in a distributed hash table. So that's a peer-to-peer -peer data structure. You all hopefully are familiar with the idea of a hash map. All right, so if I take a hash map, so a mapping of hash values to, of hash codes to values, um, and I decentralize that and basically say all of us contribute equally to uh, bandwidth and storage of that data structure, but we don't all have all the data, we just have a small shard of it, then we have a distributed hash table. And so kind of here, that's where the data is stored. And what we do is we periodically publish our records in the distributed hash table. And when I do a resolution, I start at my own database. So in this case here, Alice might want to resolve www.carol.bob in Alice's zone. So she first asks her local database, who is Bob? Gets back, ah, Bob is this guy. Then she asks the DHT, hey, who, who is Carol under Bob? Gets back, who is Carol under Bob? So she asks, now, who is www under Carol? And gets that resolution. So we still have the delegation you have in DNS. Right? But the starting point is not the global root. The starting point is you personally. And you have personally full control over it. Now, of course, you could still go and say, I'm going to delegate .ch to switch. That's your choice. But there is not only one hierarchy. Right? And everybody can say, oh, yeah, but you know, VeriSign has been really bad at operating.com. I'm going to use a different operator. Right? Or maybe I don't want to use uh, 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 dot de to resolve my bank address. You know, I'm just going to hard code bank in my own personal zone and have a direct link to my bank or to my club or to my university or to my resistance movement. Right? And then those links that can be more direct can't be blocked either. I don't have to trust anybody else. And of course, a name does reflect very clearly the parties I have to trust. If it says www.carol.bob, I have to trust Bob. And whoever Bob says is Carol, those people have to trust in giving me the right address at the end. That's where I'm going. Um, what I should also say is, in our case, we made it so that the system is privacy preserving. So when you publish these records, they are encrypted in a very special way. In that the DHT does not get a query in the plain text. The DHT gets a hash code, which it cannot tell what zone it belongs to or what label is being queried. It just gets a hash. And the records are stored encrypted in a form that you can only decrypt the record if you know what the zone and what the label was, which you as a DHT do not learn. However, the signature is done in such a way that you can verify that this record is the correct answer to this question without knowing what the question was nor what the answer is. So you can have integrity protection and only cache valid records in the DHT, but at the same time, the peers providing the DHT do not really learn what is being retrieved. So you have private information retrieval of the queries. And it's still very efficient. Checking the signatures is cheaper than checking the DNSSEC signatures. And the decryption is ridiculously cheap as well. So that's the anarchist solution. It's fully decentralized. Nobody's in charge. Nobody can control me. Right? I have privacy.